everyone, welcome back to Red Banner Racing. Welcome back to the channel. As you saw in the photo, we have some upgrades. We're gonna be putting in the hardened spiral cut ring and pinions. And the reason I'm doing this is because we've had a lot of problems with, uh, with just chipping teeth on the pinions, the spur, all kinds of problems. We were out the other day, uh, just messing around. We weren't filming. We kind of just wanted to see how this ran after we did everything to it. And sure enough, I started taking some corners and we started hearing a lot of chipping, a lot of grinding. So I'm not sure if it's the front or the rear, but we're gonna go ahead and do an upgrade and see if this helps. This is part number 9579R. Sorry for the wind. If you hear it, it's getting kind of windy right now. So I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna jump right into it and I'll explain what happened later. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the cover off. And you gotta get this one out. Now you should be able to pull this cover off. Just kind of wiggle it. There you go. All right, now you got the cover off. Uh, I don't see nothing wrong on the front. I don't see anything bad right there. And we, uh, I just serviced this. So, I mean, this isn't gonna be really dirty. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of cleaning and greasing on this. I'm gonna pop this side off. Kind of let that hang right there. Is what's gonna help you do, do one side because that's gonna help you get this out. Really windy. So you can kind of pull one side out like that and then just kind of start fishing it out right there. As you can see, all the teeth are actually fine. There's nothing wrong with this one. So I don't think the noise is coming from the front. It might be coming from the back. So, but let's go ahead and continue with this one and get this one all serviced. I'm just gonna clean this up just a little bit. Just get it as clean as you can. It's probably hard for you guys to see, but you're gonna take your 2.5 and you're gonna have to kind of fish it in there. I'm sorry, it's a 2.0. Get your 2.0. All right. Yeah, now that that's out. All right, so here's the set screw. Put that aside. We're gonna leave that in there because we don't really need to remove it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my pick on the inside. Actually gonna push it through just like that. Can't tell, but I think this one looks okay too. Man, the wind is really picking up. What the hell's going on here? Actually, you know what? Look at the tips. You know, let me know guys, let me know in the comments, is that normal? Uh, it, that part's not touching the teeth, if you think about it. It's not touching the teeth right there. I wonder if that's normal, normal wear. But anyways, I don't see anything else wrong with the pinion and I really don't see anything wrong. Wait, maybe, maybe right there. Oh, look at that, look at that tooth. Oh yeah, look, if you look at right here, guys, look at that too. You guys see that? So there's a couple spots, it looks like, where there were some problems. But you know what? There's no way this was making all the noise. I want to say it's coming from the back. So let's go ahead and clean this out real quick. Like I said, I'm not going to clean it out too much because I don't see a whole lot in there. So I'm just going to make sure that nothing's in there. I usually use Q-tips because you can really get in there, get some of that grease out. Kind of look what's in the grease. See if you guys see any, any metal. I don't think I'm gonna see anything in this. Yeah, there's no flakes at all in the grease. So I think this is okay. Should clean that bearing. All right, since everything's okay, I'm gonna clean this out real quick and we'll move on. All right, so let's go unbox our new ring and pinion. I must say, I do like Traxxas's packaging. They definitely make it feel like it's premium, which this is definitely premium. Where's that pinion? Yeah, look at that. You guys see the spiral cut? I don't know if you can see that right there. Especially on the uh, on the ring gear. Now the big differences between the stock ring gear and the spiral cut, this is this this is made of one piece. This is actually machined this way. Whereas the stock one it's not. Have you guys ever heard of pot metal? 
that how they say the, the spur gear is made out of pot metal. Well, that, that's kind of what this is. It's this material is compressed and I believe it's compressed with some kind of sand or powder. And that's how this is formed. And that's why it's so much bigger. This is actually a lot thinner and a lot smaller, but it's way stronger, like 10 times stronger than this pot metal. So you're not going to chip this as easily as you would this. So if you guys haven't done this already, I would definitely recommend doing this upgrade. I didn't want to have to do it this soon, but I've been plagued with problems one after another with this car. So if you guys, if you guys have any recommendations or see anything that, that might be wrong, uh, let me know because I would sure love to not have this problem anymore. I, I've heard a lot of people say that every every 10 battery packs or so they're replacing for years and it's 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 odd i see a lot of comments on that and i don't i don't know why i mean you shouldn't be going through that many maybe they're putting too much power to it anyways here you go got that off and we're just going to pop that off carefully Remember, we already serviced this stuff, so I'm not going to do anything with it. I might add a little bit just to top it off, but I'm actually going to leave that seal right there because I do not need to move it. We do clean our cars regularly. I know there were some comments uh, when we did the Rustler service. Uh, those diffs were not dirty, so I didn't need to clean them. Uh, I really don't know what the guy was saying. You guys can go check out those comments and... Let me know what you think he was saying because I couldn't uh, decipher his words. <laughs> so I know, uh, I know, Will didn't understand what he was saying either. So I mean, I, I mean, our discs are not dirty, so I'm really not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to top it off with 50k, like that, and that should be good enough. Yeah, if you're cleaning your discs out, guys, and you do your discs regularly, and your fluid's not extremely dirty, and the housing's not dirty. You don't have to sit there and scrub it and spray it out and spend hours on it. Just make sure it's cleaned out. Make sure all the big stuff is out. If it's extremely dirty or you bust a gear, yeah, then you're going to want to clean that out really well because you don't want a chipped tooth in there getting in your new new gears and chip another tooth. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this off. You're going to want to pop that up like that. Pop that guy off right like that. Take this pin. Push this pin in, make sure you don't tear that O-ring. Take that pin out. Now you're gonna slide this out carefully. Just like that. Take that bearing off. And that's it, now you got that off. Take my pick. My pick's not that sharp, so pick it up just like that. Put it right back in the new one. Leave some of that grease on it because that's gonna help keep it in. Just like that. Now I'm gonna clean off the drive cup. Yes, and I am gonna be replacing drive cups. I'm gonna put the TRXs in there. These actually aren't that bad. This one's actually not worn that bad at all. This one, actually, you know what? This one's not that bad either. I think it's the rear. The rear seems to be wearing a lot more than the front. I wonder if that has to do with the, the center diff fluid. I know I topped it off with 20 million weight. I was thinking about taking some of that 20 million weight out because if you have too much, uh, if you have too much fluid in there and it's really locking it up, it does put a little bit of a strain on the drivetrain. I wonder if that's part of my problem. Anyways, these bearings feel really good, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna worry about replacing these. Pop that on, just like that. Make sure everything's nice and clean. And I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of fluid right here. I'm going to put on that drive cup. Put my finger over the O-ring and kind of just twist this in. Like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get that pin. Put that pin in right there. And there we go. That's all nice and assembled. Now what we're gonna do is, and just so you guys know, the original one has these notches right here. And with those, those are actually alignment notches that align right here on the diff on each side. That way it centers it. Uh, I think that also really helps though, 
even if the screws were left loose a little bit, that's gonna help keep this in place and not keep it from turning. Uh, this new one's not gonna have it. All right, sorry about that. We had to stop what we were doing. There was a little kid that was lost. And I guess he was uh, completely on the other side of where we live. So we had to go take it home real quick. So let's get back to what we were doing. <laughs> All right, so we got that on. There's no debris in there. You wanna make sure that's nice and clean. We got our diff here. Everything looks good right there. We're just gonna go ahead and pop this on just like that. Make sure the holes are lined up. Perfect. Here we go. After having this for a couple months, kind of learning that uh, all the little tricks to it. So, so we're good. We're gonna tighten this in a star pattern. Make sure it's tight. Got all the bearings on there. Yeah, you don't want to put this all together and then forget that you put a bearing on there. And I do want to start a pattern because you want to tighten them down equally. Too tight. There you go. Perfect. And there you go. It actually looks pretty cool. I actually really like the way that looks. It's a shame I have to hide it in here because it looks really pretty. <laughs> so, yep, everything feels really good inside. So, let's go ahead and get this greased up, put it in. But first, let's go ahead and put the thing in. In. we're gonna get a little bit of grease as long as it's a uh, good grease it doesn't matter what you use I use the uh, the dynamite marine grease because that way even if moisture does get inside uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna cause any problems all right grease us up a little bit now we're gonna put this in you want to be careful not to push it in too hard can I have to see the back here there we go you don't want to push it in too hard because if you push it in too hard you could pop the other bearing out and now you got to fish a bearing in so now we got that in that's free now we're going to put some grease on this and pop it in you know i usually put a fair amount oh about right there on should be all you need I heard some people talking about checking uh, the lash on this. Honestly, you shouldn't have to check the lash on this. You should be able to put this in. If you want to check it when it's in, that's great. Uh, but you but you shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to put a shim on it or anything like that. So I'm gonna put one side in. Uh, let's pop this out just a little bit because you're gonna want to put this one in. It's kind of tight right there, but it will go in like that. And there you go. Okay, that looks good. So what we're gonna do real quick is I wanna put that center dry shaft in. That way I can kind of check it because right now there's really nothing holding it. And I wanna see how the lash looks. I could probably actually see from the inside. Yeah, it's moving just fine. Yeah, so everything's moving just fine. The, uh, everything feels good on it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and button it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the cover. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and put the shock on real quick. Let's make it a little bit easier on us. There we go. You put the cover on. You know what? Actually, you know what? While you're in here, move it back and forth. Maybe there's not too much play back and forth. I see a little bit, but I don't see a lot. So we're going to put that in. You're going to start by putting the top one in. And then pushing it down. Just like that. And so that's in. Make sure when you guys put this in, you're putting the right pinion in. Because uh, they may look a lot alike, but if you look close, they are not. These are straight teeth, and those are spline, uh, spiral cut. And I've seen videos where like they put them in wrong. So just make sure you're putting the right one in. I'm going to put that aside. And now I'm going to check it when it's in. Yeah, see now that the cover's on, there is no play. Alright, so that's good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to... Now it's getting a little dark. I can't see that it's getting dark, but I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on this. Hey guys, I kind of took this off because it's gonna make it a little bit easier. This was not easy. So I took the motor out just so I can show you. The drive cup kind of gets stuck in there when you take the boot out and that's what I meant. So usually you would put this in here, make sure those holes are lined up and now we'll put it in. It did, it did help kind of moving the motor out of the way because now you can really see it and see what's kind of going on. Okay guys, so I took the wheel off and I had to go in through the side. Uh, this is definitely a little bit more intuitive than I was hoping. So 
nice and tight. All right, that's in. While I got the motor out, uh, I got these spacers. Let's go and try and put the spacers in real quick. These are the motor mount spacers from Hot Racing. But every time I put them in, there wasn't any uh, mesh adjustment. The lash was too tight is what I mean. The lash was too tight and you don't want to do that because you, you'll end up burning the motor up or you'll end up breaking something. So uh, I, I reached out to Hot Racing and they couldn't tell me what to do. So that kind of confused me because it's their product. So their support, they don't really have much support. So what I did was I reached out to A-Main. A-Main said, go ahead and take out the original block and try again. Maybe this was stopping it. So I'm going to take that out and we're going to try again. Let's get this motor back in. All right, so I'm going to put that right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these spacers in and I'm going to have them facing forward. They do go in kind of tight. I'm going to put two in. See where it sits. Got to replace a couple of these screws because when I tried before, these screws kind of strip out kind of easy. All right, so I'm going to put these two in and then I'm going to check it. Because once these are nice and tight, the motor is not going to move. It's going to be centered. That does actually a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and put these screws in real quick and then we're going to check the mesh and see how this thing turns out. All right, so after I got the other screws tightened down, there's none. All right, so what I did was I rotated these around. I had them facing the back of the car. And I did that because right here, there's more room on the side with the D than there is with the arrow. So flipping them around pushes, pushes the motor this way, which is farther away from the spur gear. And when I did that, now I have some play. So I think that's the correct way to do it. For some reason, the instructions point towards the front of the vehicle and that's where the arrow should be. So I flipped them around. I was told also that it doesn't matter which way you have them indexed as long as they fit. But I understand why hot racing makes you, makes them, has you, <laughs> has you face forward. The arrow's facing forward. Sorry about that. Uh, let me know if you guys have had problems with that because uh, this has been really annoying trying to get this car running properly. So I really wanted to use these spacers because from what I've heard, that eliminates a lot of people's problems. So, got those in. Let me throw the cover back on and grab back. All right, guys, so I just finished servicing the rear and this is what I found. This is where all the noise is coming from. So I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see the edges right there. I'll kind of move it slowly so you can see it. Sorry again about the wind. Right there, it's really noticeable too. I'll try and put up a good picture for you guys, but that, that was chipped. And uh, the pinion, the pinion also on the bottom, same thing as the front. The teeth don't look that bad, but on the bottom, you can see they're spread a little bit. So I don't know what, why that happens, but that was the cause of the noise. So we got that fixed. Hopefully we won't have that problem anymore. I think having those spiral cut gears in the front and the rear might help. I got that hard, extra hardened pinion in there and I still have the hot racing spur gear which still looks fine the bearings look good the center dry shafts are not bent none of the front dry shafts were bent none of the bearings were bad so if this happens again guys I'm at a loss I don't know what to do I mean I even got the chassis bank to keep all the debris out which I will be using and I did see some comments down below asking me if the sledge was worth it if if I've had this car right now for one year and I was still doing this, I would honestly say absolutely not because the, this, this car is $700. Okay. $700, about $30 for the spur gear. And I bought two of them. It's about 10, $15 a pinion. And I bought four of them. It's $50 for the rear spiral cut and $50 for the front spiral cut. I am getting really close to an X max or an XRT. So, at that price point, I'd rather have the X-Max because I know what all the problems are and I know the weak points. So I'm going to try this. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know. Man, it's getting windy. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I'm missing something or I should try something. I've done pretty much everything I can. Nothing is loose. Nothing is bent. 
I've upgraded as, as much as I can on this. And tomorrow we're actually going to film RC Clash 9. So that'll be out in a couple weeks. Uh, give or take when this video comes out. But please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what else I can do to this to help out. Maybe, like I said, maybe I missed something. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.